Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here, and today we're going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy S6. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. I'd like to start this video off by showing you guys the new and improved fingerprint reader. So not only will I be showing you guys how to use your phone, I'll also be doing a little bit of comparisons with the Galaxy S5. So as you can tell, I placed the phone even upside down, placed my thumb on there, and boom, here we go. Able to use the phone. So first to show you guys how to set this up with the fingerprint reading. Now what you're going to do is pull down the notifications bar, click on the settings icon, and you're going to notice that the lock screen and security will be somewhere in your phone. If it's not in the quick settings on the top, just scroll on down and find it. So let's go into the lock screen and security. This is where you can choose what screen lock type you have. So you can do the fingerprint, also the swipe, pattern, pin, and password, or you can do none. Now, because I already have my fingerprint set up, it is asking me for my fingerprint, and this is where I can choose which one I'd like it to be. So then this is where I would choose on fingerprint, and it would take me into setting up the fingerprints that you'd like to use. Now, as a little rule of thumb, pun intended, um, I would probably do two fingerprints if you guys are going to do this. You can do three or four if you'd like, but I've noticed if you use three fingerprints or more, it'll actually take a longer period to unlock your phone only because it's going through more fingerprints. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, this is where you go into there. You'd add your fingerprint, and then this will have you place your finger onto the reading pad and then go through anything and everything. Now, I will actually have a separate video showing you the entire setup process along with some other tips for setting this up. So let's go back into the home and let's talk about more about this phone. So I love talking about the cameras when it comes to the Samsung devices. Now, the cool thing that they added in is not only can you hit on mode on the bottom left, you'd also be able to swipe. So the first thing you can do is swipe on over when you're in the camera and this is where you go into the modes. If you swipe on back, then this is where you can get into your gallery on the right-hand side. Now, this is extremely cool. Let's head over into all the shooting modes, and you want to know exactly what are these shooting modes. What did Jimmy talk about with all these different modes and what they do? You can actually hit on the top right-hand side for the info, and it'll actually tell you a quick description of every single shooting mode. Now, the first thing we'll talk about is Pro Shot. The cool thing I like about the Pro Shot is that you'd be able to edit and change anything and everything in terms of the brightness. You can change your ISO. The white balance, you know, is it, do you want auto, daylight, cloudy, incandescent, or I'm sorry, incandescent, or the fluorescent. The other thing you can do is in terms of the depth of having something in focus. If you want it extremely close, which is macro, let's say your finger, or you want to keep on going all the way back, all the way to the mountains, far in the distance. And then you can also go into some of these other uh, shooting modes to where you can have it as soft, nostalgic, and things like that. So we just talked about Pro Shot, and here's an example that I have. This right here is macro. This is where I got it extremely close to something that is right next to the camera lens. And then I was able to change it to where it's mid, so it's focusing on him, but nothing that is right here in front of the camera and nothing that is far away. And then I was able to go the distance and go all the way to the very back to where I can focus on the trees as well as this fern in the back. So as you guys can tell, Pro is going to be extremely fun to do if you're doing something up close or something far away. Here's one more example of the Pro Shot in terms of changing the depth of focus. So here is uh, something for the Walking Dead fans. Uh, here is an action figure to where you can see he is highly uh, up close and detailed. And then I was able to focus on the zombie in the next photo. So this is uh, something really fun you guys would be able to do. I would definitely check out Pro Shot. The next shooting mode that I would like to talk about is going to be the slow motion as well as fast motion. But first, let's do the slow motion. The coolest thing about slow motion now that I've been wanting to have on these Samsung devices is not only the areas that you can edit that you'd like to have either fast or slow, but also you can change it along with the sound is there too. So let's go into an example of slow motion. All right, so here is an example of the slow motion. And so this is actually a skateboarder. His name is AJ Abner, and he is in the Lenexa Olathe area of Kansas. So check this out. That right here is slow motion for the half speed. Here is the fourth speed option. 
And this is one eighth. So there is an example of what you'd be able to do with slow motion. And then fast motion is the complete opposite. And I will actually show you guys what the speeds you'd be able to do. So let's say we go into the camera, head over into the fast motion. If I hit on record, this is the same thing as a slow motion as well, just so you guys know. Nothing is going to be popping up in terms of what speeds to do yet. Then once you get on done with shooting your shot, you open it on up inside of the gallery. And then you see this little icon right here. That means it's either fast or slow motion. This is now, right here, this is where you'd be able to change where you would like this area to be the fast motion. Or what you'd be able to do is hit on split. Now you can have two different areas that you would like to have. So you can either have one or two. Then what happens is when you choose on the little block, you can either delete one of those, or here's the different speeds you can use. You have four times the speed, eight times the speed, 16, or 32. And just so you guys know, just as the slow motion, the fast motion will also have the sound as well. Before we go into another shooting mode, one really fast feature I need to make sure you guys know about is the fast camera open. So check this out. You just double press on the home button twice, and it pops up the camera within 0.7 seconds. So you'd be able to get your pictures done in an instant. Now, let's go into the next shooting mode I like to talk about, which is virtual shot. Virtual shot is really cool. It, I believe it's about right around 270 degrees around an object. And so what you do is either you can walk around the object or you can spin your phone or you can make it spin along with you. So here's a virtual shot of a NOS can. So you hit on the little icon there and it's actually going to revolve around that image that you took. And all I did was I walked around this can. The next thing you'd be able to do is you'd be able to do it with your fingers. So you can spin it across and check it out. So if you did this with a Corvette, let's say, you'd be able to go around all the different edges and things like that to check out, you know, at a car show. Or what you'd be able to do is actually spin your phone and it'll spin the photo as well. And I do have one more I'd like to show you guys. And this is actually just one of myself to where you'd be able to notice what it looks like with 270 degrees somewhere else. And so you can really see exactly everything you'd be able to do with virtual shot. Now, this is extremely fun, and I'm just waiting and excited for all the different social media departments out there to accept images like this. Speaking about the camera, in terms of opening it up extremely quick within 0.7 seconds, and also talking about the pro shot where you can change the ISO and sh you know shutter speed, things like that, here's an image that I took inside of an establishment where I opened it up within 0.7 seconds, and then I took a normal picture, a normal shot, just auto, to where I'd be able to show exactly how this looks and how detailed it is. One thing you'll notice, though, is that there's a car in the street. And I will actually zoom in a little bit more. You guys can notice this car, uh, I, I assure you, is not parked. So this guy right here, or female, is going 35 to 40 miles per hour if they're speeding, and it is not blurry at all. So this is an extremely fast opening camera and extremely fast shutter speed. And just so you guys know, it is 16 megapixels on the back and 5 megapixels on the front. So let's do a little photo comparison. This is the Galaxy S5 on the right-hand side and the Galaxy S6 on the left-hand side. All these pictures were all done with the 16 megapixels for the resolution as well as auto. And as you can tell, there is a huge difference. You can barely even see the stairs on that screen. Now let's go over to the next photo. This right here kind of shows it to where this picks up the colors that you are supposed to see with your eyes. Right here you can notice that there's yellow and gold. And over here this side just doesn't show it at all. Now let's go into the low light situations. As you can tell there is some huge differences here. Even with the lights being completely behind the subject, you're able to actually see that person is right there. And this one just looks like a huge shadow. Let's go back over here, and we actually have a little boat and a little river, and you can barely see it on this side of this phone of the Galaxy S5, but you can clearly see it in the Galaxy S6. This image right here, my little dude is standing, you can't see him at all, but this one you're actually able to. And then here is the front-facing camera. This is huge change right here. 5 megapixels versus 2 megapixels. And the aperture is a f1.9 on the front and the back, which is a much better sensor than the Galaxy S5 and any other smartphones out there. And then this image right here is extremely cool. You cannot see 
the little light going up on the Galaxy S5 as much as the Galaxy S6, which is an awesome shot. All right, so I do want to talk about one or two more things about this camera. Let's go on with the rest of the phone. Is number one, this right here is where you can flip it from the front or the rear camera. And then on the top left inside of the settings, this is where you can actually do one referred to as tracking autofocus. So this is amazing. What'll happen is you put your subject in front of the camera, you basically touch on the screen where you want it to always be in focus. And as you can tell, I did it right above my hand, but let's put it right on the fingertips. So now as I move my hand, it'll actually track this as if it was the head. Uh, or if I move my cell phone, it'll actually always keep in focus of where I select it. So that is amazing if you have kids or dogs or pets or anything like that that always is actively always moving around. So the Galaxy S6 has built-in wireless charging ability. Now this is awesome. This is right here a Samsung wireless pad that I have plugged in and all you have to do is simply place your phone on top of it and boom, it is actually charging at this moment in time. Now, the other thing is that it works with every single alliance. Then here is the Duracell Power Mat. And the great thing about this one is that back in the day, you had to have the case that fit your phone to place it on top of here. Now, I like this one only because of the simple fact that it is a little bit magnetic. So it actually pull my phone on in exactly where it should be charging. And then also makes the sound of doo -doo -doo, and then and that's when it's off. But I do like the simplicity of a big rectangle with a little bit of concave in the center, and you just place your phone right on top of it, and now you have your built-in wireless charging. Now, the one thing that I do want to remind you guys is that built-in wireless charging, when you do the wireless charging, it does charge a little bit slower than you do when you are having your phone plugged in. Now, the good thing about this phone is that with the wireless charging, this can charge just as fast as... It, but, I'd probably say majority of all the smartphones out there if they're plugged in. And I only say that because we have the fast adaptive charge that you'd be able to use on the bottom. So with the cord that comes with the Galaxy S6, when you plug it on in, you're actually able to charge your phone from 0 to 100% in 80 minutes. The other thing you can do is you can charge it from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes. And lastly, the coolest number you can say is that you can plug this thing in for 10 minutes and get four hours of use. Let's talk a little bit about the multitasking with this device. So Samsung switched it up a little bit and I actually like it much better. All you have to do to do the multitasking is hit on the recent app button on the bottom left hand side. This is where you have all the different recent apps that you have used. Now, the thing that's really cool about this is that you have the little X's to where you can exit out of those applications and you also have the multi-window icon right there, which is the two windows that are on top of each other. So if you wanted to open up the internet in terms of the multitasking screen and you'd like to have a secondary screen on the bottom, then you just choose which one you would like to use. Or what you'd be able to do is swipe on over to the right hand side over here and choose the other applications that you would like to use in the multi-window option. The other way to activate the multi-window is actually by pressing and holding on the recent apps. And this is where you'd have an entire list of all the different applications you'd be able to do with multi-window. And then what you do is the first icon you choose will actually go on the top. And then the second one that you would choose will go right onto the bottom. Sometimes it's the small things that make you love a phone. And one of the small things you'd be able to do is pressing and holding on the screen to where you'd be able to change and move around all the different icons on your screens as well as you know selecting which ones is going to be your home page things like that also this is where you'd be able to turn on and off the briefing page so some people like it and some people don't now what you'll see on the bottom is actually where you'd be able to add you know your widgets wallpapers but also themes and the screen grid in terms of the screen grid you can do it as the 4x4 the 4x5 and also the 5x5. Five five. So I'm more of a modern type of guy, and I do like a little bit of change when I get a new smartphone, and I love the 5x5. Five five. Now, the other thing is in terms of downloading different launchers and things like that, well, we have built-in themes that you'd be able to choose. So if you're down and you love the Avengers, what you'd be able to do is actually go in here, and this is what your phone would look like when you actually get it all set up. So some people wanted a black dialing pad. Well, here you go. Also, for anybody out there who love the Avengers, well, you're in luck. We got you covered. Uh, then you also have the Vintage Cafe. So this is something that I actually enjoy and love. But the good thing about it is that it changes every single icon with any theme that you go by, which is extremely cool. And then you also got the Space One. You can also go into the store 
to where you'd be able to get more of these themes. And I believe there's going to be somewhere around 22 to 25 different themes. Uh, but don't quote me on that just because it can easily change. So speaking about the small things that we love, I do have the Galaxy S6 that is connected to a Bluetooth headset referred to as the Samsung Gear Circle. Now, let's say you're at the gym, you're listening to music, or you're in your car, you're driving, you're waiting for a phone call, or you're listening to music, you know, things like that. Now, when your phone is on the lock screen, as of right now, on any cell phone, you have to, you know, put in your fingerprint or put in your password, put in your PIN, things like that. One of the things you can do is refer to as smart lock. So you go into the settings, go to the lock screen and security again, scroll on down to where it says the secure lock settings. Inside of here, you have an option referred to as Smart Lock. So inside of Smart Lock, you have two different options. You can do trusted devices or trusted places. In terms of the trusted devices, you can do this via NFC or Bluetooth. So let's say I like to add in the Bluetooth of my Gear Circle. Now check this out. Let's say I go on all the way back. And let's say I'm listening to some music or I'm in my phone or I'm in my car and I'm waiting for a phone call, things like that. When you go into your lock screen, you're actually able to... Get right on out. So let's say you're at the gym listening to your music and you do not want to type in your PIN, your password, things like that, or fingerprint. You can just swipe it. And obviously, with you stating that it is a trusted device, then that means that it is trusted. You're able to have your phone not secured. The other option you'd be able to do is where you can have it to where it is the location lock. So this will be in reference of if you're at home, you're at work, wherever you would like to set this up, it is using Google Maps. And as long as you're within 80 meters of that address through the location you know that is on your cell phone, then this will stay unlocked. So for those people who use all four of the fingerprints and you like to add you know, maybe one more or two more for a significant other or another family member, all you have to do is put on your trusted places and then this way, when you're at home, the comfort of your own house, then you're not going to be able to have to put in a password, a pin, or a fingerprint. And then once you leave and you're somewhere else, then this is where you have your phone that is on lockdown. So let's say that you have the smart lock activated and you're at home or you're listening to your music on your Bluetooth speaker or headset, things like that. And for the moment, you'd like to have it on lockdown. Place your little finger or thumb on this lock icon and swipe it to the end of the circle. And now your phone is to where it is on lockdown again to put in your fingerprint or any other security that you have. So a cool thing with the Galaxy S6 is that let's say you're inside of a phone call and you swipe on over to the next screen. This is where you'd be able to check on some important stuff. So let's say that you're in a phone call for your work or maybe your personal life. You'd be able to go into memo and then this is where you'd be able to make a memo about the phone call. Or let's say that you are on a phone call with your work or your parents and things like that, and they're asking what you're doing a week from now. This is where you'll be able to go into your S planner and then look at your entire planner to see what is going on with your life. Or if you're looking for some important information about some other contacts, and you can also do some text messages, internet, as well as checking your emails while you're inside of this phone call. So a cool little trick inside of the gallery is this. You'd be able to swipe it left and right if you like to show all the rest of the albums, or if you like to have it showing only the pictures. If you pinch to zoom, it'll actually make the picture smaller. Pinch to zoom one more time, and it'll go even smaller to where you'd be able to keep on scrolling and finding all of those images that you took a while back. All you gotta do is zoom on in if you like to make it bigger, and so on and so forth. One of the features that's added with the Galaxy S6 is inside of Messages. So open up the Messages app and then click on the top right hand side and go into the settings. This is where you can find the option of enhanced messaging. Now I won't go too far into detail of enhanced messaging, but I will mention that it is in terms of a chat service more than a normal text message. So you can send pictures, you can have send and read and delivered receipts, as well as characters up to 2000. Now, I do want to mention that this will change and vary depending on the carrier you have as well as what country you are in. Inside of the application tray, a few people will be wondering on how to make a folder. So all you have to do is hit on the edit icon, press and hold on the application you like to put in with another application, and boom, that is actually how you make a folder inside of your application tray. If you'd like to make a folder on your home screen, Press and hold on one of the applications and drag it on top of the other to make another folder inside of your home screens. 
And if you'd like to get that app out of there and you don't want to have a folder anymore, just press and hold on it simply and then drag it right back onto the home screen. Same thing as the application tray. Well, I hope this video has helped you guys out. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter as well. If you guys have any questions, it is at Jimmy is promo. And I'd also be able to help you guys out with other ideas you guys have for me to make videos about. Make sure you guys hit on like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.